Joining me now is primetime Arut Pogosian, who's going to be meeting Michael Dufort next at PFL Challenger Series 5 on March the 18th. How are you, sir? Yes, sir. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. And I love the PFL promotion. This is going to be your first fight for them. So tell me a little bit more about the details. What is the, the contract that you signed and how excited are you to make your debut? Man, I'm super excited. It feels like I'm in Bloodsport and this is the Kumite. So, you know, you got all these people from different countries, Israel, uh, America, Canada, Armenia, like from all over. And, uh, and it's like tournament style format, you know, this is our chance to make it into the tournament. Uh, so it's an awesome opportunity. Uh, I signed a contract with them, uh, one to three year deal, you know, depending on how everything goes. I have a feeling I'm going to be here for a long time, though, because PFL is something I've been wanting to, is a promotion I've been wanting to fight for for the last three, four years. I just didn't have enough fights. Now, I finally, have marinated long enough on these uh, on smaller promotions, and I'm ready for the big show. Yeah, and we can't wait to see you in it. When you look at the promotion and just this format in general, it sounds like, you know, this is where you want it to be. Like, what is it about what they're doing that you like the most? Well, I like that there's less politics involved and it's just more martial arts feel to it. You know, I like, I really like that. This uh, will provide me the opportunity, the platform to prove myself uh, by my competence, you know? So we were thrown there, you know, the sink or swim. And, uh, and I love that. I love that. And I also love that it's a, uh, you know, the president is a former fighter himself, you know, Ray Sefo, and uh, he knows what it's like to be a fighter. He's been there, you know, so uh, I think that adds another cool aspect to it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you're on a three fight win streak. You're coming off a UD win. Yep. No, no, no. It would have been a six five win streak if I didn't have that DQ. And the DQ called me delusional, but I didn't even hit him that hard. He just put on theatrics and found his way out. So really, it should be a six-five win streak. Okay, fair or enough. Whatever. So hey, I, I'm not arguing with you at all. Whatever you say goes, my man. Hey, I was just going to talk about that that last fight. It was a UD win at Looking for a Fight Fury FC 53. I mean, that's right there when you when you're fighting in front of Dana White, you know, looking for a fight. I mean, that's it seems to be like every fighter's dream to get into the UFC. Was that your mindset going in there? Did you feel like, you know, showing out at that fight could get you into the UFC? And, and, and was that your hope initially? Well, yeah, of course. You know, first of all, uh, fighting in front of Dana is cool and all, but I would much rather fight in front of Mike Tyson. That is my hero. Dana is just another promoter. Mike Tyson, hopefully he's at the lightweights event he's one of this i mean uh, uh little birdie told me it's possible that he might be there for the for my week's challenger series i don't know we'll see but that that's dream come true for me now fighting in front of dana of course it's an honor and but it didn't like didn't put any extra pressure on me that i, that I already have on myself you know for, for me, every single fight I go into is the most important fight of my life. My, uh, my buddy Alistair over him told me, taught me that he's like, it's never going to change. Every single fight is always the most important fight of your life. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I went out there and nobody knew, but I had torn cartilage in my ribs. So I had to modify my game plan and be a little less aggressive and uh, keep the fight at a range that I just could uh, avoid the grappling but I am fully healed up now and uh, I'm gonna be back to my more aggressive style even though like it wasn't a knockout I still I'm still proud of that fight I still I st literally beat the snot out of my opponent so uh, you know sometimes you don't knock them out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough, man. You you got the UD win, and and I know that that's all that matters is getting that victory inside the cage. You, you mentioned Mike Tyson, so I, I just want to ask this: well, where do you rank him as far as all time, you know, greatest boxers, and how do you feel he'd do against the best heavyweights nowadays, like the Tyson Furies and Deontay Wilders? The goat, Mike Tyson, is the goat, greatest of all time. Uh, I, I was obsessed. Like coming up, I was obsessed with Mike Tyson as an amateur. 
I would watch his documentaries and just like I watched every single video you could find on YouTube on Mike Tyson with Custom Auto and I've listened to his book. I've listened to Custom Auto's book. I, you, like my first amateur fight was in Catskill, New York. You know, it was a, it wasn't even a sanctioned event, but you know, like I, I for some reason, I feel like I have uh, Mike Tyson is like, is, I'm spiritually connected to Mike Tyson. I, I, I always loved his ferocity. And to answer your question, I think if he was in his prime right now, he would demolish everybody. Okay. Including right. Tyson Fury, who I'm a big fan of. Like, don't get me wrong. Tyson Fury is a monster. And, uh, you know, he's built a little funny. He got the skinny legs and he looks like the guy from Despicable Me <laughs> in uh, boxing trucks. But, uh, but he's an awesome boxer and he uses his gifts so well. And, but still, if Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury and Mike Tyson were going to fight, I would pick Mike Tyson all day. Okay. Yeah. Iron Mike, one, one of the absolute greatest combat sport athletes in history. No doubt about it. This is my first time interviewing you. So I, I, I want to dive into a little bit about your camp, your training partners. Tell me a little bit about who you're getting your day-to-day -day working with. Oh, well, um, you know, I train with Elevation Fight Team. They've been my team since I've made my professional debut. And, uh, uh, but this camp, I've really gotten a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one work with Drew Dober. You know, we just actually finished training right now. He's getting ready to fight next week. And uh, we really pushed each other and uh, helped each other grow. And then, um, uh, but as far as my coaches, you know, Sean Madden uh, has been amazing, dedicated. Valor Caballero, same thing, you know. And these guys have invested so much time into me and, I'm so grateful. Also, I can't forget my champ house, uh, all the fellas that live there helping me get ready for this fight. Dustin Ortiz has been uh, crucial in helping me work on my jiu-jitsu and Caleb Crump, uh, you know, the Thunder. But they, I, I've surrounded myself with, well, I feel like, I don't know if you ever read the book Relentless, but uh, there's three types of people, coolers, closers, and cleaners. And cleaners is creme de la creme, you know, like those people with championship mentalities. And I've su surrounded myself with those type of people. And uh, iron sharpens iron, you know, like and I'm just grateful to have built a strong team around me. And um, I'm excited. I'm, I feel the best I've ever felt. You know, I'm excited to showcase uh, what I can do at 100%. 110 percent really and and sh show the all the new skills i've acquired this camp well that's a, a scary thought for your opponent michael dufort Let, let's talk about him he's eight and four he's coming off a split loss to kyle Prepolek. what do you think about this matchup how, how do you match up and, and what do you feel like you're going to hold like the biggest advantage uh, or what area are you going to hold the biggest advantage of in this fight first of all uh, i don't underestimate anybody uh and uh I think Mike is uh, tough uh, and he's game. He's gonna, he's gonna be game for three rounds. If I, if I don't knock him out, you know, I, I'm prepared to beat his ass for three rounds, honestly, you know? But I also know I have the power to knock anyone out. So if he runs into a, uh, a hard punch or a kick or a knee, whatever, then he runs into it. If not, then I'm just going to beat his ass for three rounds. So that, that's as far as I've known about it. I mean, that's as far as I choose to think about it. You know, he's, yeah, he's just another opponent who's in my way, but I do expect a three-round war. Now, this is going to be in Orlando, Florida. Who's going to be in your corner come fight night? Who's making the trip with you? Yeah, unfortunately, I can only have two corners, but... Uh, um, so this fight will be Sean Madden and my cousin, Art Petrosian, who will be fighting uh, for uh, Colorado Combat Club uh, uh, welterweight title the week right after mine. So he's, uh, I really appreciate him taking the time during his last hard training week to come out for this couple of days and corner me and support me. Uh, it means a lot. We're, we've we've uh, cornered each other pretty much all our pro fights and we've been there, you know, he's been there since the beginning for me. And Sean 
you know, I've won my lights out title with him and, and ever before that and since then, he's put in so much work into me and uh, I've grown a lot with him. I, I, the only missing piece here is Valor Caballero, who's, who's my ground coach and he's been amazing. Um, I, I really wish I could take him, but, uh, uh, you know, I guess when I'm in the PFL, like the tournament, then I'll be able to bring him. But for now, it's just uh, it's going to be uh, Art and Sean. Okay, very good. And what's that cut for you like to 55? Is, is it a pretty easy one, or do you come down from a, a pretty high weight? Uh, no, I'm, I'd say I'm at about an average lightweight, uh, but it used to be super easy for me. Like, I remember when I fought for LFA, I was – eating pizza five week and just shredded like light laughing at all the other guys struggling and now i'm starting to feel a little bit of their pain like you know having to eat a salad at night i'm like i hate salad <laughs> i mean i don't really hate salads but salads get old after a while you know yeah so, for sure so i'd say i'd say i'm not a giant lightweight and i'm not a small one either i'm, I'm just right Okay. I love it. Well, give me your official prediction. Uh, how do you see yourself getting your hand raised? You said you're prepared to, to go all three rounds and, and win a hard fought decision, but do you get him out of there? Man. Uh, you know, over the years I've learned from the fight game, expect the unexpected. That's all I could say. Uh, I definitely expect to win, but I would be lying if I told you I'm going to like, submit him or not i i don't know you know whatever he present it takes two to tango uh, i i'd be lying i don't want to lie to you uh, but i am gonna kick his ass i'll tell you that much so whether it's for three rounds or one round or two rounds that he let him pick his poison that's on him but kind of whoop this is coming for sure all right. I love it. I, I will not be missing uh, this fight and just this card in general. Again, March 18th, PFL Challenger Series 5. Appreciate the time, my man. Great interviewing you for the first time. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to a couple of my sponsors, if I could. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, uh, plug your social media and thank you, whoever you want. Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Strong Science, who've been, it's a company I really believe in, and they've been backing me since three years now at least and uh, also like to thank restore hyper wellness is my recovery team they are the best with hyperbaric chambers cryotherapy you name it they got they got everything you need for all your recovery needs and um yeah the, those two for now and uh, my social media is uh, a root mma on instagram